the land of uh, Palestine, Israel. I once heard Albert Eben make a speech in this very city. He was then Israeli foreign minister saying the great thing about this dispute is it's easy to solve. You don't always hear that, but it's true. Ever since the Balfour Declaration and before, it's been very clear. There are two populations roughly equivalent in size, not exactly, in the same territory with good claims to it. Partition, a share out. It could be done easily. Most Jews support it in America and in Israel. It is, officially at least, I, this is open to doubt in some ways, the view of the PLO, it's the view of the international community, it's certainly the view of many Palestinians, a two-state solution. Why is that impossible? A group of Messianic settlers who believe that if they can pull all Jews into Palestine from around the world and make them all convert to the right orthodoxy, the Messiah will come. And they are opposed by a group of people who say, you're quite wrong in thinking God gave this land to the Jews. It's absolutely untrue. In fact, we know to the contrary, he gave it to the Muslims. And you must all get out. And uh, your people must all either die or go home. They make progress difficult too. And I don't need to tell you what the other faces of Islamic Jihad are like. And then this country, the naturally compromising group of fundamentalist Christians who say, um, <laughs> let us prevent the Israelis from making the compromise they want because if Armageddon comes, then the Messiah, our Messiah will come and he'll convert the Jews and murder all those who don't convert and all others who won't convert either. And that's the ideal solution. These three monotheisms have made life unbearable, unlivable in this small territory that they claim as holy. This must be the most prayed over, the most religious territory in our history. See what religion has done to that. And they're quite willing to have the life destroyed of everyone in this room on this proposition, any one of the three or in combination. Is not only willing to do it, but eager to do so. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, with a record like this, uh, we have to begin using our brains a bit more. And we have to conclude, I think we are left with no other conclusion, that human emancipation, the story of human freedom, the story of our becoming upright and thoughtful uh, and courageous begins uh, where uh, religion leaves off. And the sooner we outgrow it, uh, the better. And the more we organize to defeat it, the healthier uh, we shall be. So I invite you to join me in this struggle, which I promise you will last the rest of your lives. <laughs> but will be worthwhile. Thank you. <laughs> With a very slight hint to it that I do not like at all, um, of uh, the suggestion, well, you know, the Jews can really take you out if they, if they want to. It's, if there's, there's this huge secret government that they're going up against. I don't like that tone of voice one bit, and that tone of voice is repeated, I think, in the suggestion that we are only at war with Islamic terrorism because of our relationship with Israel. That's not true. That isn't true. If we broke all relations with Israel, and if the whole of what is now Israel became part of the Palestinian state, we would still be uh, having a, a, an extraordinarily uh, harsh and bitter and long-run conflict with the forces of jihadism. Anyone who tries to say, if only we could just dump the Jews, we'd get out of this, is lying to themselves and lying to you.